Should the Dallas Cowboys be concerned about the play of Tyron Smith through the first two weeks of his return? All that and more this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked, Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. If you ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your own football franchise, then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the App Store. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to the franchise when using the promo code Locked on in the game. I am Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. He is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCool BCB. Landon, Twitter questions today. How are you doing, sir? Love Twitter questions. Uh, I'm getting excited about uh, the, this game coming up on Thursday as the Cowboys head into the, the home stretch. So uh, I'm excited to have this discussion and, and see where we go from here. All right. Let's, uh, let's jump right into this. First one from mm-hmm. at Ultra underscore Ego 1993. He said, what do you think about Tyron Smith's play so far? And should the Cowboys consider moving on from him in the offseason? Hmm. Uh, well, I think his play has been uh, pretty good considering, right? Like he's he's hasn't played right tackle since, uh, uh, you know, 2000, what was it, 12 or 13, 11? I mean, it's, it's it almost well, over the decade. Um, and, you know, his first two games uh, against – uh, the the Jaguars and the Eagles were against some pretty formidable opponents. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. like uh, he had to go against Hassan Reddick, who is one of the best, if not, not leading the league in sacks. I think he's in the top three right now. Um, and then Josh Allen, who's another guy who is a, a very high draft pick, very athletic uh, pass rusher. So uh, I, I think he's been up and down at times. He's definitely uh, there was a, a series in that Eagles game where he gave up uh, back-to-back pressures, including obviously he, he it, it was basically Tyron's play that that set up that third and thirty. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. right? It was the uh, the strip uh, that that was Hassan Reddick got around the corner, and then uh, uh, Tyler got. Uh, Just a Tyler shout got out to beat. Tyler Biotish. People forget about that play, but Biotish wrestling wrestling that ball around and uh, getting it saved the game. Absolutely saved the game. Um, and then this, the play after that, after uh, not setting w- wide enough against Hassan Reddick and letting him get around, uh, Tyron overset, and then Reddick beat him inside, uh, which, you know, that's going to happen against some of these pass rushers. They're going to kind of put you in a washing machine. They're going to get keep you guessing. So I think he's still working his way, uh, it, you know, into the right tackle situation. I feel very confident in him overall. I thought that he – I think he's played well overall. Uh, I think there's room for improvement because he's still kind of figuring it out. As far as keeping him next year, I mean that contract is still so ridiculous that so I, I, I got I mean, the numbers here. All right, yeah. so la- next year is the last year of his deal. They, they've got a void year in 2024 that's tacked on. Yeah. So let's assume Tyron wants to come back and play, and the Cowboys have to make a decision. So his cap number, uh, just going into the next year, is 17.6 million. There's no guaranteed money left. If they keep him, he costs uh, it looks like thirteen million dollars against the cap. You could, you could just cut him pre June one, save nine and a half million. You could cut him post June one, save thirteen point six million, or you could just hold on to him. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's some contract uh, gymnastics they can do there too. You know, like a, a re-sign or extension or something like that. He'd be 33. Um, yeah. I, I think it's it's tough to say at this point. You know, I mean, it's a really tough call, especially since, you know, as much as this uh, end of the season has been good for what you need, it hasn't been good for evaluating Tyron Smith moving forward, right? Unless mm-hmm. the idea is that you want to bring him back as your swing tackle, which seems crazy to me. Um but what, what I also it also feels crazy to like you know try to think about what Ty, moving Tyler Smith back to, to left know. guard I, I know. after he's been playing so well at left tackle and he's going to get another offseason to kind of get better at it and then obviously Terrence Steele is playing 
as well as any right tackle in the league right now, what or was. So I, I think with Terrence's injury, you have to f- consider bringing him back, right? Because you just don't know how quickly Terrence will get healthy next year and and, and, and all that. So uh, I think you try to find a way to f- bring him back. I it's think you try really to figure complicated. out a, a contract it, it, movement number, though. It, it's really complicated because the contract itself is not bad, right? Like it's it's, it's not 13, terrible, it's 13 and a half million for a future Pro Bowler who's still only 33 years old, but he hasn't played a lot. Terrence Steele is a restricted free agent and uh, kind of things that went under the radar uh, this, this weekend, Jack Conklin and Elton yeah, Jenkins I saw for that. the Packers and the Browns respectively, both got massive contracts and yeah. really wiped out the free agents that are going to be available here in, in March. So I don't know. I don't know if you can just stick a second round tender on Terrence Steele and just assume that he's going to be back because Oh yeah, the I mean, taco they, play they, around the league is so bad that a team might be like, I, I don't know, Pittsburgh has two second round picks. They might be like, you know what, we can't get a tackle in free agency. Let's just go get this one. We know he's banged uh, yeah. up, but who cares? I don't think that they're they they would not be wise to like uh, skimp on the tag this year no. for this. I mean, like it, it's it's and, and honestly, the money difference isn't huge, so I would just I would go the with first round uh, tender on him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, frankly. Uh, and then just you know maybe you keep you keep Tyron or you try to figure out a way to to sign him to an extension that kind of moves some money around a little bit to makes it a little bit palatable. Uh, but I tend to agree if you've got all three of these guys under contract, let's run that back if they can. Uh, and if if you need to make the money work somehow, make the money work somehow. So by the way, it's it, Terrence Steele. The the first round tender is six million dollars next year. That's a steal. Give it give it to you. I mean, for, for what he's doing on that, on that. And I guess that's the way you should look at it. Like, hey, we've got a rookie contract left tackle in Tyler Smith if he stays there. And now we're paying the other two tackles on our team a combined $20 million. $20 million for three really good tackles. Basically, basically. That's a great deal. I'll take it every day. And Josh Ball and Matt Wolatsko. And mm-hmm. Jason Peters. It gives you all that opportunity. Yeah, well, Peters is only on a one-year deal, right? I would bring is, him is back, he... to be honest. I mean, if he's interested in it, and like you know, it gives well, let's go and ball all the time in the world to develop if yeah. they need, which need, they need, you know. which they yeah. they both really need. Uh, all yeah. right, let's uh, let's get to some more questions. But before we do that, we want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. If you ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise, but well, your dream can come true, because this game is definitely for you. You can manage every single strategic aspect of your team. You can play through the season and lead your team to glory. You're going to be responsible for just about everything, including hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft and all the ups and downs of the season. Locked on Cowboys listeners get a 100% free boost to the franchise when using promo code locked on in the game store. That's promo code locked on all capitals. Make sure you check it out, check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or check it out in the App Store. That is ultimate-gm.com. Your ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, Landon, let's get into some more questions. Um, <laughs> a lot of people want to know about Micah Parsons. Uh, let's go with this question from Michael. Do you guys think Micah Parsons is being told to reserve his tank for the playoffs or is he just regressing over these last few weeks? I love these either or questions. It couldn't possibly be a third option or or a combination of many options. Look, here's here's my my thought on Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons had an incredible game against Philadelphia. He had eight pressures. <laughs> he had eight pressures, and 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 you know, considering the fact that he was dealing with the flu as he was playing with, I think he's okay. Uh, you know, I think the the. The issue is that he missed three tackles. That's the issue, right? If he had made two of those three tackles, he would have had another tackle for a loss and then another sack added to uh, uh, this, this this total. I, I think where what you saw was the Cowboys' defensive line running into the best offensive line in football. You know, I, I mean, the Eagles are very good. They are I, very I, the, good. The, yep. the, 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 that's the thing that, that I think Cowboys fans need to get like more hyped up for it. Like. 
I don't care that their backup quarterback was in. That doesn't matter. Like the, the my whole point this whole time is that Jalen Hurts is is the result of of an incredible team around him. You beat that incredible team around yep. him. They they definitely have play a different game with Jalen Hurts. They definitely have more QB run options. It adds an, an extra angle that that wasn't there with Gardner Minshew. But you still beat them. You still you still got the pressure when you need it. Like look. When you need those, when you need that pressure, when you need the, the 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 pass rush to affect the offense, whether it's the quarterback having to rush the throw because he's being hurried, whether it's the offensive coordinator having to adjust his game plan and send one less guy out on route because they have to keep one guy in to block, those are those are that's your pass rush having an effect. That's your pass rush having a positive effect on the offense. And if you want to look at a situation where they didn't get any sacks but they had positive effects. Go look at the end of the half and go look at the end of the game. The Cowboys were able to get after the, the quarterback, especially at the end of the game. Gardner Mitchell basically threw away three passes because the Cowboys pass rush was getting there. to him. He couldn't yeah. he couldn't he couldn't do anything. So um I, I think that there is this obsession to kind of box score scout. And, and, and this isn't necessarily a fandom. I think what it is is that it's the national media seeing that the Cowboys don't have the, the number of sacks that they had previously and saying that there's something wrong with the Cowboys defense. And look, I mean, they gave up 27 points. Uh, it's not great, it, but it's still against 27 points against the Eagles. Right. right. And, and, and I think that the, the thing that that's kind of being lost in all this is, is everything that these offenses are having to do to account for the Cowboys pass rush and, and having to basically play left-handed because they're so afraid of the Cowboys pass rush. Yeah. The Cowboys may not be getting sacks, but the, but the, but the Eagles and the Jaguars and all these other teams are having to affect the way that they're playing offense in order to adjust for what the Cowboys defense could potentially do. to them. I just, again, on Micah Parsons, he had eight pressures uh, yeah. against one of the best offensive lines in the league. It's, and they were getting rid of the ball quick. I mean, she wasn't having these long drops and stuff. Um, and he was gassed. Like you can see it in the last play of the game. He was begging Mike McCarthy for a timeout because he was just gassed. Um, and he only practiced part of the week because he was know, sick. You know? know, like that's... he missed practice on what Tuesday and Wednesday. It was limited on Thursday, listed as questionable, played and played like 60 something snaps. If, if, if that's what a regressing Micah Parsons looks like. We got a pretty good player here. I can't wait till the upswing happens again. I can't wait till <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah. Fine. I mean, they, yeah. they've got He's... issues on defense, um, which we can talk about again. We talked about it on yesterday's show. Like the defensive tackles, for the most part, struggled. Uh, Carlos Watkins played well, but like they, they're just not getting a lot of pressure there. They didn't have Sam Williams. The linebackers are an issue without Leighton Van Der Esch. It's okay. I, I, but I've got confidence that Dan Quinn will figure things out before we get to the playoffs. They still made the plays and they needed them. Yeah. They got turnovers when they needed them. They ended the game when they needed to. And they only, I mean, again, I know 27 points is a ton, but against the Eagles, that's not a ton of points, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think the, the Cowboys, demi the defensive demise has been overstated a little bit. I think as they start to get a little bit healthier with some of these guys coming back, like like you mentioned, doing all this without Leighton Van Der Esch and, and Hankins and not giving up like 400 yards rushing, like that's and a Anthony win. Brown and, and Jordan Lewis yeah. in the secondary, right? Like it's a lot. They they've they've lost a lot and they still you know been able to win football games. So let's let's see what happens when they get a little bit healthier. Uh, I I think that this the defense still has the 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 horses to make the plays that you need when you need them. All right. Do you want to answer like the 17 questions that we have about why are there curtains up in Jerry world? No. Okay. Uh, that sounds good to me. Take so let's go to ahead, the uh, Dallas PR department. <laughs> Listen, it just, it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers everybody else. Like both teams have to play and it's, it's whatever. Fine. Michael Gallup missed time. Michael Gallup missed time to jump. That was the problem. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, that not the sun in his eyes. All right, let's get to another question. But before we do that, I want to let you know, know that this episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we are sure you're going to love. That's why you'll be able to find an episode from The League available as a bonus episode on Lockdown NFL, narrated by Super Bowl champion and legendary smack talker Richard Sherman. The League is an eight-part docuseries about the most bizarre, inspirational, and unlikely stories connected to America's favorite sport pro football you'll hear some wild stories from the 1940s and how we got to where we're at right now each story offers equal parts history entertainment and social commentary 
uh, head over to Locked at NFL for a bonus episode of the league or catch the full series wherever you get your podcast available now. Audible. Get in the game. All right. Last question here from Gorn. He wants to know, with the regular season almost done, what's something that you were way off the mark on, positively or negatively, and something you got right about the Cowboys this season? So let's first, let's, let's first start with something that we got right. What did we get right about this season? <sighs> that the world was not ending when uh, when everyone said it was when ending at several different points in the season. I, I I think that that's really where we seem to be the most right is that uh, it's never as bad or as good as we think it is. Um, it's it's uh, you know I, I think I, I think in the preseason we assumed that this team was riddled with terrible holes that they would never be able to. Uh, overcome and be have a good season I, I just i can't i the sheer volume of tweets that i received that were like the cowboys don't have this they're never going to do anything um you know and and whether it's defensive tackle or, or offensive tackle or cornerback or wide receiver or whatever it is quarterback a lot of times mm -hmm. uh you know it's it, it it's never nearly as uh uh traumatic uh, as we uh, as we expect it to be um and then I think as uh, worse than we expected, um, man, I, I, I think I, I really thought that Tristan Gal Tristan Hill and Neville Gallimore were going to yeah. find a way to turn it around this year. It, it, it just felt like they had played better football in, in training camp. They both were playing with a higher level of confidence. They both were playing early on in the season, better football in the regular season. Um, but it just never arrived. It just, you know, the train kind of just never left the station yep. there. Yep. Uh, I'll tell you the one, one of the ones that I got wrong. Um, you know, we were saying all off season, Hey, you're just not going to get the same number of turnovers on defense. You're going to have to be better on defense and stop, you know, give up fewer yards for play, get off the field, have fewer, you know, drives. The Cowboys had 34 turnovers last year, led the NFL. They have 30 this year and they're leading the NFL. I mean, the, the regression monster has certainly not come for them yet on that side of the ball, which is kind of wild. Now, on the I mean, on the flip side, the offense has way more turnovers than it had last year, and they're yeah. still able to survive. So that's a good thing. Maybe once the turnovers start to regress towards the mean a little bit, the offense can really take off. But it is shocking. This is the second year in the row the Cowboys have at least 30 turnovers on defense. Yeah, and again, uh, another reason for why you should think about investing in a defensive tackles next year is that you don't get those turnovers next year. You're going to need somebody to kind of help you in those early downs yeah. to produce more third and long situations so yes. that you can at least get off the field more. Uh, I will say something that we got right, and you and I have been talking about this for a while, but there were some concerns about wide receiver, uh, offensive line, which admittedly – opinion you know how concerned i was about having tyler smith start at left tackle uh that's yep. not been a problem but whenever kellen moore and dak prescott are playing and coaching together this is a really good offense and since dak has come back uh from the injury they're averaging 34 points per game i think a lot of people freaked out over the offseason including myself a little bit that hey you lost amari michael gallup's hurt they're not gonna be able to find ways to put up points and each year it comes back to do you have a good quarterback? Do you have a good offense coordinator? If the answer is yes to both, your offense is going to be probably fine regardless of the rest of the talent that you have. Yeah, I mean, we can have a whole conversation about whether or not, you know, where this team would be with Amari Cooper still and and without without that money and without the players that that money pay, you know paid for. Uh, but I think the, the the bottom line is is that the stance that a, a good majority of Cowboys Nation had was there is absolutely no way this team could be as good without Amari Cooper, uh, and this team is as good without Amari Cooper. So could it potentially have be better from here? And I think that's a conversation we could have had, but maybe. Uh, I but I think the fact is is that what's not disputable is that this is a conversation and not like oh the Cowboys are so obviously better with Amari Cooper. And not these players that you you paid with with this money and no, versus the at office. the same time the season could have went a little differently like if if CD would have got banged up for like say he goes on the IR misses four Absolutely. games with an ankle injury that's when things could have gotten really bad because they just didn't have the depth at at the position at the same time Amari leaving opened up the door for CD to really flourish and be the number one receiver and now there's not a question. 
about who's the best receiver, you know, between those two. And it's actually going back in hindsight, it's okay. Why didn't the Cowboys feature CD more last year when they had a healthy deck and they had Amari who could dictate t- coverage and they had a healthy Michael Gallup because CD is just a superstar. Well, I think the problem is what we've discovered is that Amari requires a certain amount of targets to get going. And, and in order to do that and try to feed a guy that you consider to be your number one wide receiver, that's a difficult um, requirement to, for an offensive coordinator to go into a game with. Uh, I think yeah. it had nothing to do with the fact that Amari Cooper got open or, or is a good wide receiver. I think it has everything to do with you needed to treat Amari Cooper like a wide receiver one to have him perform like a wide receiver mm-hmm. one. But you already had another guy that you wanted to try to, you know, get the, that kind of targeting to. So, uh, again, it's not that one or, or the other is necessarily better. I think that's my point is that we shouldn't automatically assume we know the outcome before before it happens simply based on what the move was. I think we should be open to all the possibilities yeah. more. I, I feel like now that CD has – I mean I- – I hate to say broken out because he really did it as a rookie. You know, you have yeah. a thousand yards and six touchdowns. Yeah, a thousand yards this whole, every year. Yeah, I so mean, yeah. but now that he's established himself as one of the guys, right? Now it's about mm-hmm. finding players that fit with CD, right? And that fit his skill set and guys that don't need nine targets a game to be successful and guys that can move around a little bit. So, I mean, one of CD's best strengths is you can play him all over the field, right? You can put yeah. him in motion. You can have him as your X receiver. You can have him as a flanker. Like being able to move him around is so awesome. But at the same time, you got to have other receivers that can move around with CD. So just something kind of to look forward to as we head into the off season. Yeah. And I think again, pairing that with a guy that loves to use a bunch of different personnel and move, move the guys around a little bit. It, it really is a, is a match made in heaven for, for all three of these folks. T.Y. Hilton. Kellen, Dak, and, 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 and C.D. T.Y. Hilton on the roster in 2023? It depends on whether he wants to watch his kids play football uh, early in the season. I would not, be surprised right? if he does something similar, right? Like, hey, I'm still interested in being a Cowboy, but let me, let me hang out the first two week, or two months of the season before I come back. Yeah, I wonder if there's like a roster mechanism that you could have him. Like, I'd love for him to show up at training camp and like just keep some people under his wings and like, you know, I don't know. Have a sore hammy or something that puts him on IR for the first time. Um, yeah, so we'll twelve see. weeks. But yeah, I, I, I'd love to have him back just based on that fifty-three yard catch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's already made his money. I'm one play. That's right. Is, yeah, I'm, I'm already awesome. already th- thrilled as, as hell that we got to. Yeah, he's a lifelong point. Dallas Cowboy. That's uh, right, that yeah. is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On Sports Today podcast. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. The Locked On Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All the same places that you download the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Check out Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I am at Marcus underscore Mosher. For programming note. Thursday is going to be our crossover show. So we will, together will not be previewing the game, uh, but we will have a show comes out on Thursday. You and I will be back Thursday night, Friday morning. So got to figure that out. Uh, breaking down this game against the Titans. So busy week. Uh, we'll see you guys next time.